Now, what's the greatest tool to secure America's future global influence? Is it the military, troops or drones, perhaps? Well, it turns out it could be something as simple as education. Gianni Cicchian explains. The US is investing in potential foreign leaders by educating them in America. Convinced that back in their home countries, when the time comes, most of them will side with US interests. Empower future generations of political leaders who've had a positive American experience, and they are more likely to be global partners. Libya's Mahmoud Jibril could be one example. Having studied in the U.S., he went on to become the head of Libya's transition government. He's now the leader of one of the country's biggest political parties. There's little doubt which country he would favor when it comes to dividing lucrative oil deals in the future. U.S. Foreign Service officers had their eye on him even before the revolution broke out. A leaked diplomatic cable from November 2009, written by the U.S. ambassador to Libya, Jean Kretz, described Mr. Jibril as, quote, a serious interlocutor who, quote unquote, gets the U.S. perspective, end of quote. Mr. Jibril is not the only one who gets the U.S. perspective. I'm not going to measure how many kids were really just on a program. What I'm going to do is look at where they are five years later. And you know what? 92% of the people who go on U.S. government exchanges go on to work in civil society positions, in the parliament or in an NGO. Soraya took a two-year course in public diplomacy in 2006 at the University of Southern California. In, in this particular program that I was in, um, every single lecture has a State Department member present. So you know that you're not really learning public relations, but you're being taught how to implement what they wish. The U.S. Trade and Development Agency, an offshoot of the State Department's USAID, claims that what they call aid is actually investment. The agency's deputy director says for every $1 they invest, they get $8 back in U.S. exports. America's officials maintain that it's hard to overestimate the benefits of investing in public diplomacy. The investment. I do not call it spending. It's an investment. It's absolutely an investment. And there's a return on investment. And it's very hard to quantify that return completely. But I can tell you that you could quantify it in troops that you don't have to send somewhere. Soraya never pursued a career with the training she received. For the most part, it was interfering in other countries. I mean, I may not be fond of the government in Iran, but I support 100% its sovereignty. And I was sitting in this class with um, lecturers and people saying, how do we take democracy to Iran? How do we undermine the, the government? So for me, it was a real challenge to see the program through. And it wasn't just Iran. China was on their list. I'm definitely part of the Soviet Union. And in fact, in 2007, when I was in that program, they had already started the push towards Africa. Diplomacy is good business, as has been made clear by the State Department time and time again. Getting foreign leaders and their advisors to think in English and to subsequently favor the United States in their policies is much cheaper than bombing their countries. So the State Department will certainly be more forceful in their efforts at exercising soft power. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Shekhan.